Hello, my name is Donald Rain, and my partner Cade White and I are going to explain game theory to you today. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is going to be cooperative versus non-cooperative games. So a non-cooperative game is one in which the two players involved do not uh, communicate with each other at all. Um, and the, with a cooperative game, there is, there is communication. Um, next I'll talk about dominant strategy. So to help explain dominant strategy, I have constructed a matrix. So we have firm A and firm B. So their options are to not advertise or advertise. Um, so to explain dominant strategy, essentially, no matter what the other firm does, the, each firm is going to be better off by advertising. Because if one firm does advertise and the other one doesn't, they will lose much more money than if they both advertise. Um, Nash equilibrium is very similar to dominant strategy, but the only difference is that Nash equilibrium is a decision made, or these decisions are made based off of the other player's decision. So it's important to note that every dominant strategy is a Nash equilibrium, but it doesn't work the other way around. Okay, so the next, the next element I'll talk about is tit for tat strategy. So tit for tat strategy is a repeated strategy where a player, the players, or one player will respond to the other player's um, play. Um, so for example, if I ran a business and my competitor set a low price, um, this competitor knows that I'm going to set a low price the next month and that'll under and that'll cut into his profits, but then the next month he would cut he would set a low price and then that would cut into my profits and this strategy would just keep on repeating. And the only and the only way that it would stop repeating is if one of the players decides to cease cooperation. And the last element I will talk about is a strategic move. So strategic moves are interesting because it involves a commitment upon the player to restrict his or her own options in order to make a threat credible. So for example, if I ran a business um, I could threaten to give discounts to every single one of my shoppers, but this threat, if an empty threat is not going to hold any credibility. So in order to give this threat credibility, I actually do give, I actually do give those discounts to my customers. And the hope is that my opponent will follow suit in this. And that's it for what I have here. So I will hand it off to Cade White. So my name is Cade and I will be going over some common applications of game theory in the real world. The most common application that people hear about is called the prisoner's dilemma. What this does is it illustrates why two rational individuals may not always cooperate with each other even though it will lead to the most optimal outcome. So the prisoner's dilemma starts out as this. Two gang members are arrested and then they are both individually questioned with no cooperation with each other. What they will do is they'll both most likely act in their own best interest, however this won't lead to the optimal outcome. If A and they, well first they both have two options. They can either betray each other or they can stay silent. If A and B both be betray each other, each serves a two-year sentence. If A betrays B, but B stays silent, A is set free, but B serves a three-year sentence, and vice versa. If both remain silent, both will only serve one-year sentences. 
If they cooperate and decided that they both should stay silent, this would lead to the optimal outcome. However, two prisoners acting in their own best interests would most likely rat out the other prisoner, which leads to an unoptimal outcome. I will now discuss a present application in the real world of game theory. I will do this through the most recent Brexit deal. For anybody that doesn't know, Brexit refers to Britain's exit in the European Union. This scenario involves two players. It involves Britain and the EU. So looking at it through a game theory application, we can see that there's no threat strategy or no effective threat strategy in the Brexit deal. A threat strategy is what you will do if the other says no. For example, if you do X, we will do Y. The threat strategy in the Brexit scenario is there will be no deal. If you don't cooperate, we won't come to a deal. This is not motivating for either side as a no deal scenario is not optimal for either side and leads to strong economic consequences for both the EU and Britain. A very recent issue in the Brexit deal involves Ireland and Northern Ireland. The EU does not want a customs border between the Ireland and Northern Ireland border. However, if Britain exits the EU, the EU's best decision for themselves is to put in place a customs border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. This gives EU no dominant nor any threat strategy to um, evaluate. It basically puts the EU in a position to say, we need to put a customs border between Ireland and Northern Ireland, or else we won't put a customs border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. This is a perfect example of two players not cooperating in a scenario where, and it will not lead to an optimal outcome. However, if both the EU and Britain cooperated, it would most likely lead to an optimal outcome. Looking at Brexit through a game theory approach illustrates rational players acting in their own best interests, which does not lead to the optimal outcome. Thank you.